Hi folks, I'm Stephanie Spencer with Natural State of Health Plant-Based Wellness. Uh, I'm a cardiac RN turned whole food plant-based educator after we reversed my husband's pre-diabetes with a whole food plant-based diet. Um, and I went on to get certified um, in plant-based nutrition through the T. Colin Campbell program. But today I'm going to show you how I make my morning smoothie that I love so much that I've eaten it every day for about a year and a half. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, I like to do smoothies in the morning and I encourage my students to come up with a, what I call a breakfast lunch formula so that you can just free up bandwidth. You create a healthy breakfast and lunch formula, maybe one or two recipes that you like. And then you can save all your energy for figuring out what you're going to eat for dinner because you just don't have to think about breakfast or lunch. So, to, so today I'm going to share with you my smoothie recipe. And um, I like smoothies because I get seven different servings of excellent high quality whole food plant based um, different food groups that I need that I probably wouldn't really get any other way if I didn't just get it in my formula in the morning. All right, so I like to start with a base of leafy greens. Um, leafy greens are really important because it's a great source of nitric oxide and we need nitric oxide to heal our coronary arteries. And most of us, we like come across this plant-based thing at middle age. We all have high cholesterol. We all need to do some repair. So this is a great way to do it. So I start out with, and, and you can use any kind of greens that you like. This is just what I have handy. I'm gonna throw in some spinach, okay? And, um, just so you know, if you start making spinach part of your morning breakfast formula, um, just be aware spinach is readily available. It is super cheap. And um, however, if you never deviate from spinach, it, it has a lot of oxalate in it. And so if you start doing um, smoothies every single day, which is kind of what I do, and you never deviate from spinach, you may um, have to be careful with uh, kidney stones because we can get oxalate kidney stones. So I just recommend spinach is fine, but vary it with other things, um, kale, lettuce, anything. Um, today, I'm gonna use some lettuce also. And if you don't like kale, if it's too much, you don't ever have to have kale in a smoothie. Um, I'm just throwing in some romaine lettuce here. And romaine is actually a pretty high nutrient um, uh, leafy green. So uh, yeah, and, and you know, romaine lettuce is a mild leafy green, so it's it's easy to eat. Um, so that's that's good there. And then I'm going to show you my secret formula, and that is broccoli sprouts. So I have a microgreens business, and I sell broccoli sprouts at the farmer's market. But if you have the use of your arms, and you have a mason jar, and water, and access to the internet, you can order uh, broccoli seeds. I get them through uh, trueleafmarket.com, um, but you can order your own broccoli seeds and just sprout them. There's, um, I'll link a video on how to sprout broccoli sprouts in a mason jar, um, but it's really super easy. Broccoli sprouts have the highest concentration of this compound called sulforaphane known to man. Why is this important? So if you're a fan, broccoli sprouts have been studied by Johns Hopkins researchers extensively, and I'm also gonna link to another video uh, below in the description on um, the research on uh, broccoli sprouts. It is, a, they are amazing. What do broccoli sprouts do? Well, they're really one of the most amazing food groups on earth, um, the sprout version of broccoli. Uh, so researchers have found that broccoli sprouts actually target cancer stem cells. They repair DNA damage and they pull carcinogens out of our body amongst many other benefits. But anyway, I'm gonna link that video about the broccoli sprouts. So that was just a, my uh, tip of the day to get another extra food group that is actually a superfood. There's a hundred times higher concentration of the active compound, which is called sulforaphane, um, in broccoli sprouts as compared to mature raw broccoli. So an ounce of broccoli sprouts has the same amount of sulforaphane as a pound and a half of raw broccoli. So if you put an ounce in, which is like, uh, this is probably an ounce right here. I'm only putting like, you know, that's, that's for a clinical level, but I'm putting, I recommend at least a quarter cup of broccoli sprouts. If you get a quarter cup of broccoli sprouts a day, that is your cruciferous vegetable serving, and you can knock that out of the ballpark. You put it in a smoothie, and you don't even hardly taste it if you don't like broccoli. Um, but uh, if you do like broccoli, just eat it straight. But anyway, so these are my greens. And then what I'm going to do, this is my little formula. 
I'm gonna throw in some steel cut oats and I just get, you can't get too many. It's just the only limit is like, how do you like it to taste? I put steel cut oats in because it's an easy way to get a whole grain serving. Um, so I just put in the amount I can hold in my hand and um and it will make you more full okay so if you do a smoothie and you don't put any uh, oatmeal in you will find that you are going to get hungry before lunch um, but this is a good way to stave off hunger and um also speaking of whole grains um you know the more whole grains we can get in the reason it decreases our hunger is it stimulates this phenomenon called um the ileal break. If you can maintain some fiber or some calories that make it all the way through your small intestine, so we got the duodenum, then the jejunum, then the ileum, that's a third part of your small intestine. If you still have food in your small intestine at the very tip called the ileum, your body's gonna activate this process called the ileal break in which it will suppress your appetite, okay? So that's how you get to where you just don't even need, you don't feel hungry. And people that had a higher fiber um, diet, they did studies and found that they ate like anywhere from 100 to 200 calories less if they get their ileal break activated. So that's why it's good to have these whole grains. Now, we're also gonna have some flax seeds. Um, for those following a plant-based diet, it's maybe a little bit much. Um, Flax seeds are an important part of omega-3 fatty acids. So we want to get flax seeds in every day. I don't really know how I would get flax seeds in if I wasn't putting them in my smoothie. Uh, people that eat oatmeal every day, they might sprinkle them on top of oats. Um, I use in, I use whole flax seeds because I'm grinding them up immediately in my smoothie. But if you don't like smoothies and you want to, you know, get flax seeds uh, on your oats or something, use the ground up form. If you ingest an entire flax seed, it's just gonna come out the other end. Okay, so they've gotta be ground up. So they'll be ground up in here. So that's my leafy greens and my oats and my flax seeds. Now I've got a little trick that I just kinda learned and I'm passing all this along to you. I like my smoothies sweet. I like a sweet breakfast, okay? So something I learned is like, you know, I usually use strawberries and raspberries. They're not really particularly sweet. If you want your smoothie a little bit sweeter, instead of putting, you know, like a concentrated sweetener like maple syrup or agave nectar, which is fine, but just put a half a date in. I use these medjool dates, okay? Medjool dates are like nature's fudge. And I put a half a date in. If I put a full date in, it is too sweet. So a half a date, I need my almond milk. Okay, and then I'm gonna put um, my almond milk in. So now I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna pour oh, about like an inch or so of almond milk. I like my smoothie a little bit creamy. Some people do water, but I like uh, to get a little bit of cream. Well, that's probably more than an inch, but that's the almond milk I put in the bottom. I use almond milk because it doesn't have any saturated fat. So if you're middle-aged and you're going on a plant-based diet for, or experimenting with a plant-based diet for health reasons, um, we have to be careful uh, getting a lot of um, coconut products. I love coconut. And before I knew what I know now, <laughs> I lived it up on coconut and then was dismayed when my total cholesterol wouldn't come down. So um, coconut has a lot of saturated fat. And if we like drink coconut milk every day, uh, or coconut yogurt products like that, and especially coconut oil is one of the highest, the more, twice as much saturated fat as butter. Um, be very careful with that on a regular basis. Just save that stuff for a special treat. So for my everyday stuff, I like to use almond milk because um, there's no saturated fat in it, or no saturated fat on the label. So now we're going to mix this up. All right, cover your ears. <laughs> And I use a Nutribullet as opposed to like a Vitamix or a Blendtec, okay? Nutribullet, and I'm not getting any kickbacks from Nutribullet, but um, these type of smoothie makers are very inexpensive. You can get them like 49 bucks at a big box store, but I don't know if you can see this here, but we really don't want to absolutely liquefy every single bit of intact whole grain. So that's why I like the Nutribullet is because like I put this stuff in first. I want to kind of like really blend up my dates and stuff but you can see there's still traces of the um the steel cut oats and the flax seeds okay 
That's really what we want. We don't want it to be liquefied to a flour state, okay? Because we want these grains to make it all the way down to our ileum. We want to get the benefit of a more intact grain, okay? And so, like, basically, that's my philosophy. The oats and the flax seeds, as much as you can kind of stand to eat, uh, there's no upper limit, <laughs> probably. Okay, so now I'm going to put some strawberries in. I just always like strawberries. Berries are really um, health-promoting. Um, so you want to get berries in every day. I just put, and there's no, you, you know, like, there's no right or wrong. I, well, I should have showed you, I guess, but I just put a couple handfuls of strawberries in. I love raspberries, and so I'm putting a handful of raspberries in. Um, my recipe actually calls for peaches, and I happen to be out of peaches today. So I am thrown in have some frozen pineapple I happen to do so I'm throwing in some pineapple um, probably I'm not gonna need a lot you gotta be careful with pineapple and dates I'm just gonna put one pineapple in but I would have put more peaches in because they're not as sweet okay and then you have to put some citrus in your smoothie or it won't taste it tastes like grass so citrus like lemons or limes are basically nature's salt okay so we're going to put the lemon juice in i just squeeze some in you can put too much in so i start with like this is what i cut off of the lemon but um yeah when i go to the store every week i get a bag of lemons because i use them on everything but um yeah so just squeeze some lemon juice in you can always put more in if you think it's not enough but you can't take it out if you put in too much so there's our lemon juice and our fruit and now we're going to blend this up it's voila so now i'm going to dump it into a glass i just don't like to drink it straight out of here okay and there we go so here's my morning energy smoothie it is not really a made for Hollywood color, as you can tell, because I put a few little spinach leaves in, but it is delicious. If you want it to be hot pink, uh, if I hadn't put the spinach in, it would have been like bright pink, like in the movies, right? But, uh, and then I sir, I usually eat it with um, Ezekiel bread or sprouted grain bread with a little bit of jelly. Just stop putting the butter on, you will get used to it. It's hard at first, but then you just forget all about the butter and you don't expect it anymore. So. Um, the morning energy smoothie plus one slice of sprouted grain toast contains 16 grams of fiber. This is more fiber than most Americans get all day. So if you just add this to your usual routine, you could almost be doubling your daily fiber intake. Every additional 10 grams of fiber that we get decreases our long-term colon cancer risk by 33%. Okay. If you get 10 more grams of fiber per day. Um, and that, only is fiber from food. If you get it from Metamucil, it does not have the same effect, okay? So that's why it's important to get our nutrients from food, not from pills and powders. Um, and so yeah, the smoothie is has seven important whole food, plant-based food groups. Um, we've got our leafy greens, we've got our berries, fruits, whole grains, flax seeds, and the cruciferous serving with um, the broccoli sprout um and yeah so 16 grams of fiber so live it up this is a delicious breakfast that you can have every day and not have to think and it's crazy healthy you'll feel good all day so if you're ready to take a decisive step to improve your health click below and check out my plant-based transformation for beginners course it is a step-by-step self-paced online program where you start, you don't need to know a single thing about plant-based nutrition, but it's specifically directed at folks that really want to prevent, improve, or reverse chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. So we go step by step, you don't need to know a thing, and I'm going to give you all sorts of resources, and um, you can follow up with me afterwards for coaching, and we're going to get you all set up, all right? So click the link below, and you can learn more. Bye-bye.